Hi, I'm Mark Maglioli, and we're going to pick up right where we left off. We're reading Boston Accent, available on Amazon.com. But your subject matter, buy it, buy it today, buy one for your friends. Makes a great Valentine's present. Okay, Boston Accent. Back on the home front, my personal relationships were out of control. I considered Diana my girlfriend, but I was also dating Angie, while Rachel was still climbing in my window. On top of that were four other local girls that I was intimate with, including Kate. Angie was the only one that knew about the others and actually laughed about it. Our relationship was very mild, and I think both of us were realistic that we had a great friendship, but our age difference would hinder any serious romance. What does one do when he realizes he is bitten off more than he can chew, literally? Throw a party, of course, and invite all of them, and see who is left when the dust settles. That is exactly what I did, is host a party at my parents while they were down the Cape on vacation. I had a bunch of musician friends of mine set up on the back deck to provide some very loud rock and roll. One by one, all the girls I was seeing showed up, and when they saw I was being affectionate with all of them, they quietly left without making a scene. When it was over and done with, I had three remaining, Diana, Angie, and Kate. The other three were gone, and Rachel wasn't invited which she would make me pay for it down the road. The band was awesome, and they brought down the house with the cover of Joe Walsh's Rocky Mountain Way. It was the same song I had recorded for a school project when I brought them into the studio. At 11 p.m., the cops showed up and told me to shut it down, and I had no problem with that. The night had been a success, with some hurt feelings, but no drama. Now it's time for the drama. The weekend after my party, I was standing at the end of my driveway talking to Angie when two cars pulled up at the same time from opposite directions. Angie and I recognized both cars before they came to a complete stop as Diana and Rachel. Angie said, I'm out of here, and ran into her house. Up to now, Rachel had kept a low profile so I was really surprised at her course of action. Turned out she had been stalking me since being snubbed from my party and wanted to give me a piece of her mind. Diana, being there simultaneously, created odds so high you had a better chance of winning a multi-state lotto. Rachel was the first out of the car, pointed at Andy as she ran out of the house and said, Who the fuck is that? Then she sees Diana get out of a car and she says, Who the fuck is this? I know you must be thinking, what a nice girl. She just misunderstood. The kind of girl you introduced to your mother. Yeah, right. Diana looks at Rachel and says, I'm his girlfriend. Who the fuck are you? I make quick introductions. Rachel, Diana, Diana, Rachel. And then I take Angie's cue and I go in my house. As I walk in the front door, I see my mom standing in the large picture window watching the scene unfold outside. She looks at me very serious and says, If you're going to play, you have to pay. Words of wisdom. I tell her, I've been playing so hard, I need to take out a loan. Would you like to be a co-signer? She says, I think you need to go back out there and face them like a man. Boy, you hate that when people say, oh... So back out the door I go, and I try to make light of the situation by asking the girls, So, are you two hitting it off as well as I thought you might? Not a smile in the house. Rachel does not disclose the fact that she likes to climb in my window in the middle of the night. I am thankful for that small favor. Now that she's met Diana, she wants to know if I'm sleeping with Angie. Diana has already met Angie as the neighbor. So she's fine with her. I tell Rachel she's just my neighbor, but she won't let it go and tells Diana, Don't believe him. He's screwing her, and who knows how many others. Diana says, 
Why do you care if you're not with him anymore? And why are you here now? Rachel says, I was just passing by. I saw him with that girl, so I stopped to warn her that he's a dog. He'll fuck anything that bends over. If your best friend drops her keys in front of him, she better kick them all the way home. Rachel continued to shit all over me for the better part of five minutes and waited for Diana's response. Diana thanked her for the information and told her she was a big girl and could handle it. It wasn't quite the response Rachel was looking for, and she said, You learn the hard way. I did, as she jumps in her car and drives off. I still look at Angie's house, and her younger sister and she are watching from her bedroom window. Her younger sister waves, and I see Angie shove her. I smile at Diana and ask her if she's all right. She says, Wow. Well, it's more like, Wow. Is she bitter or what? I said, yes, she is. And she also has some mental issues. Diana looks up at me and says, promise me you won't ever give me reason to be bitter like that? I tell her, I promise. I promise. And I walk her in the house where my mother has moved away from the window and is acting like she didn't see a thing. The following weekend, I told Diana I couldn't see her on, on Saturday so I could spend the day with Angie, but that I would have Sunday dinner with her and her family. Jake and his new girlfriend, Karen, stopped by my house to pick us up and were going off for the day to find something to do. Jake had one of those conversion vans from the 60s with a bed and a bar in it and little side windows shaped like hearts. Angie and I hopped in the back, and Jake drove back to his house to get his wallet he had left behind. While we're parked in Jake's driveway, Rachel pulls in, and she has Diana with her. Rachel pulls in, and she has Diana with her. Period. Angie and I can see them, but they can't see us. And Angie is freaking out, thinking that they are going to pull her out of the van and kick the crap out of her. Jake closes the curtains that separate the driver's compartment from the back of the van and walks up to Rachel's door before she can get out. Rachel wants to know if he's seen me because my car is home, but I'm not. Jake assures her that he has not seen or talked to me. Rachel and Diana are both eyeballing the van at the same time, and at the same time they say, He's not in the back of the van with someone, is he? Jake says, No, it's just my girlfriend, Karen. Wave, Karen. Karen waves from the passenger window and flashes a nervous smile. Jake tells Rachel that they're late to catch a movie and they have to go. Rachel and Diana just stare at Jake as he jumps in the van and we drive away. It looked like Rachel was going to follow us but changed her mind after a mile or so and she turned down another street. I find out at Diana's house the next day where I have to play the dummy. Don't say it. That Rachel had staked up my house and followed Diana home. She then knocked on her door to tell her that she was going to save her from being hurt by me, even if I killed her. Wishful thinking. Rachel then came up with the idea to catch me in the act, and Diana went along with it. The first thing out of my mouth was, You're not going to start hanging out with her, are you? Diana makes this sour face and says, Fuck no. She's a psycho bitch. I said, thank God for that. The year ended on a quiet note, and Rachel stopped coming around. Angie also called the quits with me, saying my life was filled with too much drama, and she got plenty of drama from her soaps. For the first time in a long time, I was seeing one person, Diana, and I was content. All right, we're going to end a little bit early here. Because we just did a we just did a double back to back reading, and uh, I'm in charge, so we'll pick this up again tomorrow. God willing, we're reading Boston Accent. I'm Mark Maddioli. Boston Accent is available on Amazon.com. Ciao.